Hello everyone, I'm Denise Whitelock, Professor of Technology Enhanced Assessment and Learning in IT, the Institute of Educational Technology at The Open University. And today I want to tell you about a system that I've been building with um, Oxford University, it's an EPSRC funded project, um, Building and Testing Open Essayist. And one of the uh, drivers for us in this project, because I've been involved in providing automatic feedback in a number of systems, was can we provide advice for action? This is a notion I've been writing about for the last few years, because I'm not interested in just feedback or feed forward. I'm interested in advice that moves the student on to do something better. And the area we're looking at was essay writing. And we're also concerned in this research project how to provide a meaningful visualisation to the students to help them improve their writing. So as I said earlier, the, the partners were Oxford University, the computer science department, with, headed by Professor Stephen Pullman and ourselves at the Open University. So SAFECY was the name of the project, you can look that up supportive automated feedback for short essay answers and this provided the tool, an automated tool, to help students improve on their essays. One of the drivers, as I mentioned, was that the Open University is a distance uh, university. Students don't uh, uh, meet with one another regularly and there is no tutor support for drafts of their first assignments, their written assignments, which are usually essays. And we thought if we could produce some sort of automated feedback where there was no tutor support, this could help the students and uh, reduce the dropout rate. So in this area, we were looking at really at the effect of summarisation and trying to understand what happens when we provide such a system in an evaluation. So my real sort of driver idea about this was that if you want to actually understand something, you're able to say it back to another person. So if you're in a dialogue, I explain something to you. If you understand it, you can explain it back to me. I'm calling this talk back. Now, what happens if the machine, the open essayist, could talk back to you, explain back to you what you'd written? In other words, summarise it. And so this is the, uh, why we needed the natural language processing experts from Oxford to do this talk back to provide summaries of the essays and the key words and key sentences. Now, what Oxford did was provide this keyword and key sentence extraction. And by keywords, we don't mean assigned keywords as you put on your paper. But before the natural language processing can take place, there's got to be some pre-processing of the text. So what happens with that is that we filter out unwanted parts of speech, which are the cardinals, the modals, the adverbs, etc., and filter out stop words, which are the meaning poor words, as you can see in the diagram below. So if you look below, you can see essay version one, top 10 keywords, and then the stop words. That's what you get when the stop words were not removed. And then when you get rid of those stop words, you see how more meaningful the words become. And then the natural language processing takes place, and that's based on an algorithm. So it's not due to just frequency. I've built systems before, like Open Mentor, where we've looked at frequency of words. Here, what you've got is that all the words of the essay then become nodes in a graph, as you can see on the right-hand side of the um, slide. And they are linked with uh, edges and these links are between the nodes and then an algorithm traverses the graph to derive the keywords. So in other words what we're finding is the connectedness of the words. 
So the key sentence extraction, which gives us our summary, is, is roughly a similar process to the key words. And um, you need at least 1,500 words in the essays. It's, it's more accurate. And there's a text ranking algorithm. The feedback to the students is really in two forms. You've got the essay, where the analysis is, it will show you where, the, where we've picked up things in your essay, which is that part on the left-hand side. So you can go back to the original essay and find where the analysis has taken place and where it occurs in your essay. Then there's the analysis part, where we look at the key words in, and uh, key sentences. And there's a, a, a number of graphics to help the um, student understand the analysis. So as I said earlier, what it really does is present summaries of your work in different ways for you to reflect on what you've written. Now, the important thing here is that it doesn't tell you what to do because what we're trying to build up with the student with writing essays, of course, is transferable skills. But it is talking back to you, telling you what it thinks you've said and is that what you meant to say? So here we've got feedback on key sentences. And we've got the order of importance of the sentences. So this is, your, is a summary of what's been written in this particular essay. And you can see the introduction has been picked out as well. That's the pink uh, uh, box on the left-hand side. Now, not only do we pick out key words and phrases, you can actually manipulate those. You can bring them down, drag and drop them, and organize them into different groups. And you can start to see how uh, your thinking develops and whether you are building up a sort of coherent story with the groups of words that you're trying to choose and talk about and write about. And here you can see how the... Um, clustering has taken place and if you look down to the right hand side you'll see a hint because we give hints to um, you with each screen if you want to use them you can see you can pick them up on the top right hand side and in this hint um, you're being guided about what you can do to help you move on with that essay here's our mashup here it shows you where the key words and key sentences are appearing in your actual essay and the key sentences. Now this is a simple key phrase dispersion plot which was very, very useful to the students. What it does, it shows you where the key words appear in the introduction and the conclusion. Because if you think about an introduction, it's telling you, what you're, the reader, what you're going to talk about and then the discussion or the conclusion should say what I've learned about what what you should understand from what I told you I was going to talk about and what what where the evidence that I've produced in the body of the text has taken me and students find this immensely immensely helpful because you've got words appearing in the uh, conclusion that perhaps didn't appear in the introduction. So you're thinking, well, why did I, if I said all that in the introduction, why haven't I referred to them back to them in the conclusion? So the most used features that students used on H817, which was a master's course in open and distance learning, here is the um, access and used features. So as I said, it was used by these students and we did the statistics and found that the grades for the first essay related to the number of drafts. Not unreasonable that the more drafts and the feedback you got, the better the grade you got on your essay. And that also correlated with the number of site visits and number of drafts. And again with essay two. But more importantly is that the this course has only been running for two years and in the first year they didn't have access to open essays, but in the second year they did and the mean grade, overall grade, was better 
when they used open essayist. Now it could be that open essayist is forcing the students or encouraging the students to prepare earlier. That might well be the case and we need to investigate, but whatever, preparing earlier is also a good sign to get feedback or advice for action and uh, it's certainly having an effect in this particular course and we're going running it again this year. So here are some comments from the students. You know, the summary is an extension of the keywords and phrases and will make me think about whether this is really what I wanted to say in the essay. So they'd really understood what um, and saw the benefits of using Open Essayist. And I can see the benefit, another student said, because it's talking about the structure. It will help you understand where you need to work in the different sections. What you're missing, maybe you need to fill in a bit more or not. Especially when you've got no one with you, and it, these master's students might not have written an essay for maybe 10 years, you know, since they'd done their first degree. There is a new feature this year, which I'm going to tell you about, which are called rainbow diagrams. And the point of the rainbow diagrams are they're a visual representation of the key words and key sentences. And in this, in our particular case, violet represents the introduction and red dots represent the conclusion and the colours in between represent the rest of the essay. Now here we've got 10 identical paragraphs were put in and you can see there's this um, almost rhomboid structure coming through. Now here's another pretend essay, something in which we're putting to test the system. You've got five identical sentences and you've got this spheroid. But look at this Stanford University Booth Prize essay. The arguments are all tightly bound around the introduction and the conclusion. Everything is well connected. There's a good argument and a good structure. This is an OUSA awarded with a high grade. Obviously, it's not the standard of the Stanford Booth essay. But again, look, we've got this clustering. The introduction and conclusions are starting to come together, the violet and the red. But we can see that there are some of the arguments you know, is peripheral, maybe not needed, as you can see by the outlying nodes. Here's a low-grade essay, again, very scattered, not well connected. The red nodes, the introduction, are scattered, some are, you know, in the periphery, whereas the conclusion is coming in more into the centre, some of the violet, but some are extraneous too. So, we can see that in the intro, even in the visualisation, we can start to pick out what's good and what's not such a good essay and where the density and the connectedness comes into play. What we found is that the rainbow diagrams are related to the mark awarded. This is a very unexpected finding from the um, project. But what we did was we looked at and by hand marked the essays and we can see that there is a significant relationship between the marks and the essays. So 17.2 percentage points higher than essays rated from rainbow diagrams as low. We're not saying we're going to mark the essays using the rainbow diagrams. But a student, these are now available to the student, they can start to see, but just by the visualisation maybe, how well their essay and how good it is and how they can start to improve it. And if they put in another essay, another version, they can see a rainbow diagram maybe that's more connected, something that you can understand visually very quickly. 
The other work we did is we actually um, gave some psychology students on a panel who were volunteers to um, write two essays for us and we gave them hints before writing. And we found that the hints before writing, it was a randomised control trial, so some had hints, some didn't. And that if you do receive hints before writing, you do better. And so we put a lot of effort into giving students very personal, constructive comments after they've done some writing. Some students don't pay that much attention to that um, uh, feedback. So maybe it's something we ought to think about, is perhaps giving more hints first. So why would are these systems, or trying to build these systems, important? I think for my research, and one of the drivers for me, is that I'm trying to create teaching and learning dialogues and moving towards guided learning supported by technology so that the analysis, the learning analytics that's going on underneath is helping the students to judge, learning, teaching them to judge their own work. It also provides reassurance and perhaps with the different visualisations and types of feedback because we all learn differently, we're not all the same, that we can start to, with automated feedback in this way, provide a variety of signposted routes to achieve learning goals. And I'll just leave you with some of the references and do go and look up our project on the web. Thank you.